I'm embarking on a bunch of changes to revise my home theater space and implement a 2.0 of my home cinema. Let's talk about some of the kind of supporting features and accessory items and so on that I'm intending to change in the space. So while it's arg arguably more fun to talk about new speakers and new screens and changing other changing technology aspects and so on, what really helps finish a home theater space is all the other stuff around your environment. And there's a variety of changes that I'm looking to do in my room in conjunction with all of the gear and the installation flip-flops that I think are going to really help further elevate and change the presentation and improve the performance of the space. So I wanted to dedicate a video to kind of lay out a couple of those plans. And of course, as I go forward, I'll be making specific videos about all the individual elements, what I've done, what I've chosen, and how it went in terms of putting it into the room. So let's talk about some of those finishing elements. When I did my room a few, a few years ago, one of the things that I really wanted to do right away from the original plan was treat the space. And so I worked with GIK and bought umpteen panels, corner base traps, absorption, diffusion, range limiters, and so on, that really helped to significantly improve the acoustical and audio performance of the space, and it's been awesome. I love the GIC panels. They've done an exceptional job in my room. But I think I can go a little further with it. And one of the areas that I neglected before, and, and over the last few years, never came back to do anything about, was the ceiling. Now, by most of what I've read and the research that I've done, treating the ceiling is really important, particularly from the perspective of a center channel speaker in dialogue. Getting that first reflection kind of killed for sound coming out of your center speaker really helps to add clarity and detail and quality to that most important speaker, arguably, in a home theater setup. So I will be adding kind of a row of absorption panels, probably at least three, of the two foot by four foot 242 panels that GIK offers right around that first reflection point off of the front wall. Probably the same 242 panels that I use on the side walls actually. I think three should do it and they sell them in three packs so that's a nice even mapping there. But I am consulting with GIK for their recommendations. Just started exchanging some emails with one of the techs there talking about what we did in the room originally and now what are the best options in terms of extending the treatments, doing the ceiling for sure, but maybe some other things in addition to the ceiling. Should I add some more diffusion or is there something else that can further help anchor the sound and improve the quality and clarity and so on of the room? So we'll see where that goes. I'm eager to see what they recommend. And again, I'll be talking about whatever I purchase and put in the room in some future videos. I will be tweaking some of the treatments in the room itself part and parcel with the speaker changes on the back wall where I have those monster bass traps ha uh, hanging. That space needs to be recovered for speaker locations. So GIK makes uh, basically stands that can be attached to most of their panels. If you can't wall mount them, they can be freestanding on the floor instead. So I will be picking up a couple pairs of those stands and just mounting the monsters on those and kind of sandwiching them a little bit closer, more in front of like that curtain on the back wall and again making room for for new speaker locations and a new type of speaker installation for the space i should mention as well just to roll back a second i also do plan to buy the cloud mounting brackets for the gik panels it looks like they make mounting their panels on the ceiling pretty easy a couple of bolts screw in the the cloud panels to the the interior sides and edges of the panels themselves and you have a nice sturdy two connection point, you know, minimal space from the from the ceiling. And so that looks pretty good. Although I'm asking the question on the web page, those cloud brackets are only available in white. I, I don't know why you would go white on those or at least <clears throat> why isn't there an option potentially for black? So I've asked the question. However, if they don't have them, if they only come in white, a little bit of spray paint will take care of that. I'll black them out. My ceiling's black, the panels will be black. I want everything to be black. And that's an easy fix for myself. But if I can get them in black directly from GIK, save me the trouble, save me the hassle of having to paint some stuff. Another thing that I just recently did actually too, is for the longest time, 
I've left the badges on all of my GIK panels. They came shipped from the factory with a stick-on, gluey, tacked-on uh, GIK uh, acoustics uh, logo in the upper right-hand corners. It's a white logo. I complained about that in, in one of my videos I did before on acoustic panels. I don't know why you put those on there to begin with. It would have been nicer to leave them off. Maybe put them in the box. Let me put them on if I want to put them on, or at least have made them black. In any case, a half an hour down in the theater, a hair dryer, and a little bit of, of rubbing some of the excess glue off. And I got those tags off of all the panels with, with very, very minimal residue. There's a couple of them. I, I'd like to get a little more glue off still if I can, but for the most part, heating everything up and rubbing the excess sticky tack, the sticky glue off worked just fine. So I think it really changed actually the, the character of the room. Those badges, they just didn't really fit right. But now having completely nondescript full black panels uh, maybe it's just me because it's my room. I go in it all the time and I saw them. They kind of bugged me. Now they're gone. It feels a little cleaner, a little fresher, but it was an easy fix. And, uh, and so I did do that. The other thing that I might do is um, I may have some space for a couple other smaller types of panels. I was looking for some less expensive stuff on Amazon, some like 12 by 12 squares. There's a lot of foam acoustical treatments for sale on Amazon, pretty cheap. I kind of doubt that. If anybody out there has bought those panels and used them successfully in a space, please post in the comments. I'd really be interested to hear about it. Which ones did you buy and what did they actually do for you? The To me, it seems the, the, the feedback on a lot of that stuff seems to be it, it's not really worth the money. It's very, very, very light, very thin, and you're probably not really getting actual any actual real acoustical benefit out of that stuff. But I think they sell a lot of that. I see a lot of videos other people are making and they have what look like those regular Amazon foam panels on their walls and in their backgrounds. So people are using them, you know, even people making content and doing stuff like this. I, I don't know. I'm a little unsure about it. So I did find some other panels on Amazon that were actually made of, of, uh, of fabric of their thinner 0.4 inch. But those I think might actually do a little bit more to at least break up some of the sound that might be hitting a panel like that versus the foam. So I've got a couple ideas in mind for how I might use those if I do decide to pick up some of that. The doors into my theater have the glass panels on them and I was thinking to stick one of those one of those square 12 inch by 12 inch panels into each of one of the glass panels on the back side of the door. That's one of the hardest surfaces in the theater and it's towards the front of the room so certainly sound is hitting that glass and hitting off of those doors. The other thing that I was considering is uh, other things that I've read and been researching have suggested that if you're going to use an acoustically transparent screen, which I'm switching to, some of the sound coming off of your speakers is bouncing back off of that acoustically transparent screen. And so that's kind of jumbling around in there. And that generally it might be a good idea to have some level of absorption and such on the wall behind the AT screen. So that's the other thing that I'm considering. And maybe even in a few other spots behind the curtains and so on. I don't wanna go crazy with it. I think there's a little bit more to potentially take advantage of with regards to hitting some spots, breaking up some of the reflections and, and that sort of thing. But I'm not gonna be buying like a thousand of these panels and, and putting them all around the room everywhere that I can. And in most cases, or pretty much all the cases that I'm considering, except for the ones, again, on, the, on those glass uh, squares on the back side of the door, anywhere that I would use the little thick 12 by 12s would be hidden, It'd be behind the screen, behind curtains, and so on. The treatments, the only treatments that'll be out that you can see in the space will be the GIKs. I'm also kind of interested to see what happens in the space once I get some more powerful subwoofers running in there that can dig a little deeper and hit a little bit harder in all of the base regions and so on. Um, I kind of wonder if I might, I, I guess, I don't know what's going to start rattling. I might need to solve some things with my doorway or potentially with the closet door in the back. I've already done a little bit of like foam lining um, into the door jams and such to deaden them a bit and also to prevent any light leakage in case the lights are on in the basement outside of the theater room. But I might need to do a little bit more there or just kind of batten down the hatches, so to speak, on the space. But once I get the once I get the the new subs in there and really put it to the test, we'll see what rattles, and we'll see what needs some attention. 
And the last thing that I'm thinking about is I kind of built this really nice pocket at the front of the room. So the ceiling already is black. That whole front screen wall around the screen is, is fully curtained, velvet, velvet curtains. And I did those curtains about three feet back on each side of the wall. But the carpet in the room is just one solid fixed color. I didn't do a stage I, and I didn't do anything to kind of color differentiate the front of the room. So I have this black pocket, this full ceiling to floor curtained pocket, but the carpet just runs right up to the wall. And I think the gray was a good choice. Full black carpet in the space would have just been too much with the black ceiling and the black walls and so on. You do everything, I think, and eventually the black kind of becomes a little more oppressive. I'm glad I left some of my trim white and that sort of things, just to have a little contrast, but that sea of gray going all the way up to the screen, I think particularly once the speakers and such are gone and they're up in the wall, you know, behind the screen, the towers are gone, the center's gone, and that whole area is open, I think I'm gonna want something to break that up. So I'm just gonna probably do a rug on top of the carpet, and I've been looking for options for a black rug, something like an, an eight by 11 or an eight by 10. So it'll come a good bit out from the wall, um, but I'll, I'll take that rug and push it all the way up to the front wall, try to cover a good width of the screen. And I think I'll get some other benefits from that as well. So not only will that be hopefully a thicker rug on top of carpet and its thick pad, adding a little bit more breakup and, and um, absorption and diffusion and so on um, in that front area of the space. But again, all of that light that's reflecting off of the projector that's going down lighting up that gray carpet area will hopefully get absorbed into that black into that black rug and i think it'll look great i talked to the carpet company to see well can you guys come out and maybe cut out that front section and re-merge it and just lay a black patch in the front of the room and unfortunately the carpet that we chose doesn't actually come in a black it comes in a few grays but find not a lot of people want to buy black carpet right really why would you want to buy a black carpet except for maybe an application like this there's precious few black rugs and that sort of thing, but I have found some, and I think that will add a nice, it'll add a nice breakup to this, this full sea of gray on the floor because I don't have any risers. I don't have anything else kind of breaking up the characteristics and the presentation of the floor. The rug will do that, and it'll have some other, hopefully acoustical and light reflective benefits as well. So that's what I'm thinking about in terms of the other stuff. And in conjunction with all the gear and everything else going on in the space, I think that will help both dress it up again and further improve the performance. And per the other video that I made in the Home Theater Builder series, don't overlook that stuff, right? Those finishes in your room, those last little touches, decor items and finishing items and so on can make a big difference in the way things look and the way the room presents itself. So that's that. And again, I'll make additional videos covering the specifics of what I do and how it looks and, and so on as we go through this overhaul and this home theater 2.0 project. Please check out the other videos. So much more content coming. I've got so much to cover with the rebuild of this space. Please like, particularly subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and look down in the description if you'd like to help support the channel. There's some ways to do that mentioned down there. Thanks so much for watching.